Yes, people, welcome back to the Graph Kings podcast. We're back in Moomoo's, Kent's hottest nightclub. Today, we've got a very special guest, someone that the younger generation could really look up to and learn a lot of things from. So, Warren Spencer. How you doing, man? You good? Nice boys, you boys, on, thank you for having me. It's good thank to have you, you on, bro. Here, bro. Big question. Who the hell are you? <laughs> Who am I? It's a great question. It's a great question. So, I think at the moment, my... My main focus, so to speak, is the YouTube boxing scene. So some people know me as the mechanic right now. Um, it was a recent a recent name change after meeting with the Tates. Okay. So I'd been boxing from a younger a younger age. Uh, I say the first time I was like 12, 13. I used to get bullied in school. So classic, dad took me to a boxing gym, learned how to fight, whooped some ass, went back to school, <laughs> went from there, found out I was good at fighting. Right. So I... Uh, Fought in about seven competitions. The the last two were serious knockouts, good knockouts. And I got crowned Pretty Boy. Now at the time, Pretty Boy <laughs> kind of makes sense, you know? <laughs> and uh, I kind of I kind of ran with that. But then as I as I entered the YouTube boxing space, there's a bit of a washed out name, you know? Right, yeah. Pretty Boy, it's been, you know, rinsed, repeated done. and reused. Yeah. yeah, so we had like Floyd, P Pretty Boy Mayweather, Floyd, yeah. and we have uh, Anthony, Pretty Boy Taylor. You know, the guy that sounds like the zebra off uh, Madagascar, <laughs> that guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so... I kind of just moved forward with the mechanic and so that's how we got here. So that's my main focus right now. You could say I'm a bit of an entrepreneur as well. I have multiple businesses which are now fully okay. outsourced that allow me to, you know, apply my time to boxing and training and becoming a better fighter. So that's me as a whole, man. I grew up in the Isle of Man, which is uh, a small rock in the middle of the Irish Sea. No. Yep. There's not much going on there apart from sheep. And <laughs> every single bird you get with your mate's probably got with her as well. So that it's intimate. like, sounds familiar. Do you know what I was going to say? Yeah, that yeah. doesn't have to be an island to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, What's so I'm not a redneck, though? but yeah. What's well, your ethnicity? Ethnicity. So I am uh, half Asian. So I'm like, I like to say my dad from the waist down because we know what Asians are, Asians are known for. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my dad's from Yorkshire and I'm from, uh, my mum's from the Philippines. So oh, wow, that's where okay. I, get, it's a, I get a free tan from, uh, from her. Yeah, what nice about you? Mix. What about you? I'm Turkish. Ah, okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. thought you got the you got the fresh tan, bro. Thank you, bro. I mean, that's what got, the sunbeds do for you. Teeth as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> very Essex. I was I saw yours actually. I know you got your teeth done as well. <laughs> yeah. I was just having a little browse, and I see you actually went to Turkey. But yeah, if, yeah. You you did go for like the more natural look, which is good. Mm. It doesn't look like bait veneers. Not like. Some people on the panel. <laughs> <laughs> you could open up a can of beers without one, son. <laughs> I look good, bro. I'm only joking. Thank you, mate. This Sorry, mate. Two apples off camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's a threat. It's like, oh. he'll, he'll do nothing. He'll do nothing. So you said the the Tates gave you the name mechanic. Is that because you break people apart? Uh, what, 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 this mantle. Yeah, where'd that come from? I think you can use the mechanic in multiple ways to involve boxing, right? Dismantling people's faces, all that stuff, putting them back together. But the, the true reason why I was called the mechanic is because when I was, I'm going to say 13 years of age, I was interested in, as you know, all young men are interested in motorbikes and cars and cool things. Um, I was interested in motorbikes more particularly. And my dad... I'm not going to say I was like come from like a war torn poor country, but it didn't have the means to provide me with a brand new motorcycle from fucking road and track down the road, you know. But he was a mechanic, so I used to sit and watch him do up the cars in the garage, and I spent a lot of time admiring him as a as a young boy. And one day I, I said to him, "Dad, I want a motorbike. I really need a motorbike. I think it'd be cool. I want to learn it." I was like, "He was like, kid, it's not happening," you know. Yeah. And then one day he came home and he opened the opened the van door, and there was this like piece of shit motorbike in the back whereas like grass had been growing through it it was all rusted and he was like got you a motorbike and i just looked at him as if to say like what is what is this <laughs> and then like piece by piece as you could imagine he built it from the ground up to this amazing motorbike oh, which wow. was just like it was it was it was the the brand was a putsch it's a proper old school in 1980s almost a classic he got it for 15 quid from a farm oh. you know so obviously then he kind of passed the torch to me naturally. What do you want to be when you grow up? If you love your father, right? You want to do what they do. Mm -hmm, Andrew Tate, chess player. What is he? Chess player. You yeah. kind of follow your father's footsteps. So I grew up training how to be a mechanic. I learned how to be a mechanic. I qualified as a mechanic. And I used to work on like heavy goods vehicles, like, you know, HGVs, things like that. And then I kind of realized that I'm actually a shit mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> so I fucking quit that. And then now I'm punching people for money. So. That's how we got oh, there. Fair enough. What about, what what about, what? Got... I was just going to say, because we were talking about boxing, how did you actually get into the YouTube boxing space? Mm. That's a good question. So the, the YouTube boxing space for me is, it's an area that I looked at 
but I didn't at the time have the social status, without sounding cringy, I didn't have the social status to be a worthy opponent to any YouTube boxer. It wouldn't, make, it wouldn't have made sense to fight me because everyone was like, who the hell is this kid? Sure. You know, you just, some, some loser, no following, no clout. You can say a few things, you're a pretty good fighter, but you're not entertaining or whatever. We don't know who you, you are. You don't sell tickets. You don't sell tickets. Mm. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day. And just going off on a bit of a tangent here, that's what we see in YouTube boxing today is that you see a lot of people that are amazingly entertaining, but the shit boxers. Mm. So if you go back to the early days, Muhammad Ali, what was he? A fantastic entertainer, but also a fantastic boxer. Yeah, so I mean, what's the formula? You know, both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's both. Yeah. So I believe that I had the boxing technique and the formula. I, although I didn't have a full amateur career, I still knew I was a good fighter. I was knocking people out. Sure. So I thought, right, time to get into that space. I just thought if I focus on the social stuff, focus on increasing my yeah. social appearance. Get you more into those spaces. Basically. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Branding, Brand. all this sort of stuff. And, and then that kind of coupled with that. And uh, fortunately, where the big sort of break was, a lot of people would think it's just been hanging out, hanging out with the Tates, but it actually wasn't. I was watching my friend um, at the FCC uh, full uh, full contact um, MMA fighting thing in Liverpool, and I ended up meeting a the guy there just through like friend of a friend. He was like, "Oh, I'll meet my friend, meet my brother Kay. He's into boxing. He's a manager. You know, I think you'd be good." And it just kind of like went from there. And he was like, "Who do you want to fight?" And I was like, "Anybody." Do you know what I mean? I'll fight fucking anyone. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And then he actually lined me up for a fight with Roman Fury. That was my original fight. Wow. So it was to fight Tyson Fury and Tommy Fury's brother, Roman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was my original plan. So it was go in there, squash Roman, and then and then move on from there. But he yeah. ended up pulling out. And then the Jack fight came along. And then now I'm here. The Jack oh, wow. fight. Yeah. We, we bumped into him not too long ago. <laughs> we, we might he have knows. him on. Next <laughs> yeah, I know, he knows. You know, that's fantastic because I've seen that he was there. The, the, it was the comment about him with the boyfriends eating candy floss. <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing? What's he doing? <laughs> Riding fair park rides with the boyfriends. He should be training in the gym, preparing for me. <laughs> he's got no experience. He reckons he's going to flatten you. See, this is the thing, right? So I'll give Jack his credit where credit is due. He's had a full amateur career, yeah. right? But we don't know who he is because obviously an amateur career is under the radar. But I'm a very, very dangerous fight for Jack. I The first thing I said to Jack was, well done, mate. Fair play for taking the fight. Because Kay, my manager, was like, bro, we can't get you a fight. Every single YouTube boxer seen you hit the pads, bro, don't want the smoke. So I was like, Jack, fair play. You know, I was like shaking his hands, you know. He stood up to it, basically. Yeah, he fair stood up enough. to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now it's kind of come to it. I'm like, bro. You need to learn how to let your hands go. He's a he's just a orthodox, normal boxing stance. Lot loves to flick the jab out, but he doesn't like to fight. When I look at him fighting the ring, I see a man that's just there because he feels like he has to be there. He doesn't want to be there. He doesn't want to fight. Mm. You know, there's no aggression in him. So I think that's why taking the fight with me is very dangerous. You know, you're that confident about it, yeah? Absolutely, bro. Love, yeah, love absolutely. That. Love that. But you have to back yourself. If you don't, what the fuck are you doing there? Yeah, if you don't you back you yourself. In well, and I want to rewind a little bit, bro. If you don't mind, tangents have got the best, better of us. No, yeah, you're, you're, you're good, bro. It's just, it's, it's, it, it, we just jump from there to there. But I want to go back a little bit. I want to go back from being that sort of teenage kid to wanting to build your social status to mm. how did you get in the places and surrounded by the people that you are now surrounded by from that kid of realizing he's a shit mechanic mm. to where you are today. Networking is a word that a lot of people use, mm. but I don't feel like they fully understand what the word means, what networking actually means. A lot of people look at the word networking and go, oh yeah, good networks and net worth. Fantastic. Yeah, great. But networking doesn't actually make you money. Mm -hmm. It's actually extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people get the wires crossed because what's the first thing you said to me when I walked in the room? Oh, you look good, bro. You, yeah. you know, the nice suit, dress well. 100%. Well, that, believe it or not, it's just a simple networking tactic. You know, people take you seriously by the way you dress. It's a form of good manners. Mm -hmm. People say manners don't cost anything. I disagree completely. Manners do cost things. It, this suit costs money. Being well-groomed costs money, mm -hmm. you know? So I think when you understand that you're going to have to be prepared to, to part with money to actually get to places and be in, in the space of someone, then that almost, you know, it elevates you to a new place in life. And I'll give you a good example. So the where the snowball effect kind of started with me, with the whole, let's just say, leading to the Tates, was I am a follower of Mike Thurston. Now, yeah. obviously, most young <clears throat> men know who Mike Thurston is. He's yeah. just this jacked guy, like caramel Hulk-looking motherfucker, just super good-looking. Well. Yeah, good yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Amazing guy, amazing guy. Super calm, didn't do anything controversial, just stuck by his guns, mm. just became this like knowledge pool of fitness and, you know. Master of that craft, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, yeah man. He's just amazing at generating an audience. He's amazing, uh, you know, uh, monetizing from that. He's a businessman. And I think kind of growing up, I don't want to sound too like, like I'm simping here, but growing up, I kind of like looked up to him, you know? Mm. And there came an opportunity where it was to go on a mastermind event to to basically be in Mike's presence, yeah. spend a couple of days with him. He'll teach teach us all of his networking, how he uh, manages social media and all that sort of stuff. And I was sitting at home and I clicked on it and I will, I'll just be completely transparent. It was about £9,000 to get on the event. Oh, wow. Fuck it. Like, yeah. Now, the, the, the first thing that you see, when you say that, people just go, what the... That's a car. That's a, a big holiday. A family of five can go on a cruise for a week. They think about all these material mm. things. Mm. And a lot of the YouTube comments were funny because it was like, bro actually paid nine Gs just to be friends with Mike. You just see all this hate just pulling out Pulse, of nowhere. Yeah. But to me as a man, I'm sitting at home and I'm not saying nine Gs is chump change because it's not, but I had it to spend. And I, and I knew that if I invested it in that, I'm effectively meeting the guy that I look up to. And when you look up to someone, it's a very powerful thing because you fucking listen to them, mm -hmm. you know? If if we had Top G in the room now and he says something, what do you do? You fucking hone in, you don't say a right word. Now. Yeah, you just you say nothing. So I, I, can't, I almost had that with Mike. I walked into the, to his villa and I was a little bit starstruck at the time, but I just kept it together. I knew if I treat him like a bro, he just, you know, it's what's it, well, he's a treatless celebrity, treat like a fan, you know? Yeah, I sure. treat him like a brother and that was it. And we got on very well. And over those two, two days, two to three days, I could confidently say that 9K is 20X already. Wow. Well, yeah. Because of the network, the people that I got involved with, the things that I learned about social media, he sat us down in his in his villa and explain to us exactly how he did what he did. And not only that, but think about it as well. You spent nine Gs and there's 10 other guys with you that have got nine Gs to spend yeah. on, on two days. So who were they? It's two days. Oh, wow, so, yeah. they're, so all, they're, they're all other, other geezers that have got their shit together. Yeah, in, on the same in, path as you. In one way yeah. or another, they have. And if you don't look at that and go, That's fuck, an opportunity, yeah. I get it now, I get it. Then, you know, I think you're a fucking idiot. But that was like the start of the snowball effect, so to speak. But yes, people, I hope you're enjoying the pod. If you wouldn't mind, hit that subscribe button. My veneers are going to need the chains quite soon, so I need that money. Thank you. <laughs> Where was the villa? It was the buy. Is the buy or is I Marbella? Marbella. Yeah. So the, yeah. So the. So how long ago was that? It was a couple of months ago now. Oh yeah. wow! Oh, is yeah. this what? happened this quick? Yeah. So this is why. This is where it all kind of comes Blog together. So well. you know, like since since then, like meeting and like spending that nine k, going on that holiday. Yeah, yeah. How would you say like knowing these people and being in these spaces has impacted like your personal life and your career in every single way yeah, possible? Yeah. Because again, people look at nine thousand pounds as a big price to pay, but it depends. It depends what journey you're on, because. Look, you can be ballsy, right? You you might not have that as disposable, and that's fine. A lot of a lot of viewers, you lads at home that are thinking this guy's crazy, cool, call me crazy. But you're crazy until you're successful, right? And then you're a genius again. Mm, so cool. if you if you take a loan for 9k, that's ballsy. That's mm. big ball shit. You know what I mean? Because you then know you're accountable. If you don't pay that for back, sure, yeah. shit's gonna hit the fan. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of take bigger risks if you want to, mm. or you can just spend your time saving a little bit of money, thinking about how to make money and just generating an enough capital to spend it on that. But one of the craziest things you can do is just make loads of money. And I've done this, by the way, I'm guilty of this. And then it's just spend it on material things, mm. you know? We all have. But <laughs> we all, we all have, have and we all we do. We still as, do, yeah. As, as, as yeah. young men, it's just like, it's almost impossible to avoid. But if there's one thing that I can say to, to lads at home, it's just to encourage them just to say, look, if you, if you come into money, don't piss up the wall, don't go out, spend it on chicks and bottles because that is just bullshit and it will never last. I agree. Once, once that's gone, it's gone. Mm. But again, sorry, we're going. No, 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 go for it, bro. Yeah, no, yeah. Go, as much as you want. Going, going back to the uh, to to like the snowball effect, so yeah, to speak. Yeah. So things happen very quickly from that yeah. point. From the mastermind weekend, one of the key moments of that was I ended up on a rooftop again in Marbella, sparring Luke Barnett. Now, I don't know if you know who Luke Barnett is or what he does, but he was twenty third in the world, ranked in the world in MMA in the UFC. So he's he can bang, bro. He's like six. Six foot six, 110, 109 kilograms. He's a fucking beast, right? Mm. So he had me on the roof in Marbella 
And Mike was going, yeah, let's get some spar on. This guy thinks he's a bit of a boxer. Let's see what he's got. <laughs> so I was firstly, I was doing the pads with Luke. And then Luke was like, come on, then, a couple of kickboxing rounds. Let's go. So we started having this tip for tat kickboxing rounds. And the next thing, he takes me down, chokes me out on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm rolling around thinking this guy could end my life at an instant. <laughs> but there's something that happens when you when you go rounds with a brother or you go rounds with someone. There's like a bit of a bond, a connection. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of respect each other because he was trying to do loads of fancy shit on me. Yeah. And it wasn't working because I've got, I, I've got an idea of what the hell he was trying to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. So from that, I kind of developed a connection with him. Mm. And... The second key moment is we were we were sitting down in this place in Marbella. What was it called now? It was like a nightclub. Had lots of uh, dancers, performers going on. And I sat next to him and I just obviously knew he was a friend of Tate's. And I got speaking to him about it. And he was just like, yeah, yeah, we just, I'm good friends with Andrew. We, you know, we go way back. He's always invited me to his house to spar. And I never want to go there because I'd rather be sat in a beef for drinking cocktails and getting <laughs> body shots in book arrest from him because he's just an animal. And then his phone was going off and it was Tate and he was just texting him back at the time. And this to and fro was going, I was like, holy shit. Like every <laughs> single guy on planet earth will be like, he's texting yeah. Tate right now. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is going on? So I was like, ah, my toes are curling the bottom of my shoes trying to keep it together. And I was like, so how do we get a little bit more network to take then? <laughs> and then we started speaking about the war room. And that's, so that's a whole new conversation in itself. Cool. Um, I don't know if you guys watched any of the Tate Confidentials. Of you see what, yeah. what the war room is, what it's yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. So we, Luke and I had a brief discussion on the war room. And he said, look, I think you'd be perfect at this. And it's, it's, it's a pretty easy sell, right? Mm -hmm. You know? So from that point, it was like the next step. So the next step was to be introduced into the war room. And then I was actually in the war room for two weeks, right? And the IRL event, or what we call the in real life events that happen within the war room, the, the taste decided to put a weekend on at their house where they were like, they'd invite some Gs from the war room over. We'd do some stuff for Tate Pledge, which is his um, his charity, raise some money. We'd have a feast. We'd just do some talk. We'd do a bit of sparring, some fighting, just a full weekend with the bros. And to me, that sounded amazing. Yeah. Now, obviously, I knew Luke. Luke happens to be the top boy in the war room. So I was like, doubly struck gold and i was like luke get me on that event bro <laughs> whatever you do get me on that event and he was like all right okay we'll see what we can do we'll try and make it happen so long story short he makes it happen oh, so wow. there's these there's boys that have been in the war room for two years and this is the first time they've met the tates so i've been there two weeks fast track pass through luke barnett because i'm a g and then i'm there <laughs> and then i'm there and i'm just sitting there and i'm just like what is going on life is just fucking that's awesome crazy. that's crazy that's crazy man. i, I, I need to have the yeah. timelines you said this year so yeah, so well, yeah. What month back, did you yeah. meet Mike? What month was you was you talking to was it that same trip with Mike with when you met Luke? Yes. Right, so what month was that this year? So I went to Marbella. I think it was July, end of July. Yeah, end of July. Jesus, man. So it was September. Is it end of, no, no, September, August. End of August. So it was almost like two months. In month between. and a half yeah month yeah, and a half that's mental yeah yeah which is crazy it's crazy it's crazy but wow the turnaround, but, but here's the thing again right so this is what i say about networking yeah. it's so expensive you, you've no idea how expensive it is and imagine this right so imagine you land a dinner or you you go for a meal with that guy that's 20 actually multi-millionaire guy eventually and you just don't pick up the bill at the end imagine you're like yeah cheers bro see you in a bit and you just bounce he's gonna be like the fuck yeah. i'm like i'll get the bill it's my pleasure thank you so much for your time is it you know handshake well dressed well mannered well groomed you're ticking all the boxes i don't care if you're 20x in me bro i'm paying for that meal because i know what i'm about and that's what i'm here for do you know what i mean mm -hmm. so this is what i say don't confuse networking with this thing that you just rock up to. You know, you see these bullshit networking events. I say networking, a bunch of PC nerds just rock up into some fucking <laughs> B Tech studio somewhere, <laughs> and there's there's free drinks with a twenty quid ticket on the front door. Don't that's fucking bullshit, mate. <laughs> Never ever ever get yourself to one of them. You know, like HP fucking yeah, Dell meeting sure. or something. <laughs> bullshit, bro. You know, I don't know. That moment that you saw Top G, how how did that feel like seeing him? Because I don't know how I would react. See now, I was conditioned. I was conditioned from Mike because I I just met one of my fucking heroes, Mike, yeah, of course. and I was like pre-trained. Right. So when I'm at the top, G, I was like, "Sup, bro? I see you every day. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I see you every. I know who you are in my in my mind. <laughs> We're bros, bro. <laughs> I think he just kind of he was kind of like, cool. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I like this kid. I know what he's about. He's yeah. not he's not up here simping like. I think a lot of the guys that were there, this is no disrespect to any of the guys that were there because everyone's a gentleman. Yeah, of course. But I almost felt that I was sitting there and 
Andrew was just in like a full time interview. Mm. You know, we'd be, I mean, I know he, he's happy to do that. Andrew's like super generous, super calm, super intelligent, like unlimited energy. And I'm sure it's not a problem for him. But from where I'm sitting, you know, I was just looking at this guy and just like these like 30 Gs around him, just all asking him questions at the same time. Obviously Tristan as well. Yeah. And I was just thinking, fuck me. <laughs> this guy literally is just, it's just a walking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he, just doesn't, he just does not stop. He just doesn't. It's, just, it's a state of consciousness. You know when he's like unlimited energy, Aikido, yeah, fuck yeah, this, yeah. can't be tired, it's impossible. Like that guy literally just doesn't, he's like chat GBT on, <laughs> on fucking size 10 shoes. Do you know what I mean? I just walking around. <laughs> I don't know where he pulls it from. He says caffeine and um, nicotine. Guy, nicotine. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I don't know how where he pulls his energy from because he's co constantly on the go. Well, me and you can't have nicotine. Not nicotine, caffeine. So that one's out the window. Yeah. Well, I can <laughs> have caffeine up until six. After that, that's ruined my whole evening. I can have caffeine just not before six. Teeth start rattling. Like onto the ceiling. Unless I'm on a night out, people are offering me Jaegers. Then I'm all about it. Then I get that one goes out the window. <laughs> Obviously, I don't know if you know, but we actually attempted to go meet the Tates two two months ago now. Yeah. Jesus Christ, it's gone quick. It's been about that. Yeah, fast, yeah about yeah. two months ago, we attempted it, and like, like you said, we didn't know what, when we was walking down to his house. Mm. Obviously, you told us before the pod how hard it is actually even to get into the fortress. Yeah. When yeah. we was on the stretch down there, I was like, I don't even know how I'm going to react if I meet this guy. Like, because mm. we we actually confidently thought, you know what, we've probably got a good chance yeah, of meeting him because we, we had yeah. certain people on the inside and we had like a, a, a kind of a way in but we just yeah. didn't have it was before fuck it we'll risk it obviously it didn't work out the way we wanted to but we've had um obviously dialogue with tristan which is pretty cool liaise over, over whatsapp and stuff but when you actually got there how do you get clearance not that everyone's i know that everyone's not gonna be able to get the clearance that you got but like yeah what, yeah what did you do i think you you have to understand that from from that point when you are where they are in life yeah <clears throat> This is one of the questions that I got quite often actually is because some people seem to think that I'd spent a crazy large sum of money, like 50K or something randomly just to be there. Mm. But you have to think these guys are literally billionaires. Mm. They do not need money. Yeah. They don't give a fuck about money. When you go to them, like, oh yeah, I'll give you a million quid to come to your house. You'd be like, are you a dick? Mm. No, get fucked. You know what I mean? They just don't care. They're just, they're just not bothered at all. So when you say getting clearance, I think it's more just... It's just them making a executive decision at the time, you know? Mm. As you can imagine, a lot of people, they're probably the most demanded people on planet mm. Earth right now. Mm. Everyone wants a slice of the tates. And you can see why, you know? You've probably got the most, two most capable, charming, charismatic guys on planet Earth right now. The most Googled man in the, on the planet. They mm. Everything they say goes viral. They have a way of articulation that's just seconds and on. You haven't ever Crazy. seen it before. Mm. So, you know, they, they they very much understand that they're the valuable ones. Yeah, of course. One of the funny things Andrew said to me was like, yeah, everyone always comes to me with this idea and this product and they're saying, yeah, well, we'll come up with all the ideas. You have to just sell it. And he's like, "That that's the entire battle. Yeah. Like, Selling just something. putting my name on it. It's just, it's, it's sold. But why are you trying to sell me on all, all I have to do is sell it? It's like, I could just do that with everyone. So yeah. I think what he's trying to push there is for, he has deals with guys within the war room, you know, cause he trusts who is in yeah. the war room with no contracts, mm. like zero contracts, oh, wow. no lawyers, no legals, no percentages, no this. It's just like, right, if you give me one M now, I'll give you 1.1 back in 12 months, sweet handshake. Shit, German handshake. And it's done. Yeah. And it's done. Yeah. So that's the kind of level that he deal, he, the only friends that he kind of has are people that are within the war room or they have, you know, a connection through somebody. So. I think getting clearance isn't really something that you can just get. It's just, again, it probably goes back to networking. Yeah. We're, we're back. We're back at square one every time. You well, know, what do you have to bring to the table to get into the war room? <laughs> so, that's a really good question. Actually, we have to think about this one. So, a lot of people would be very mistaken on the fact that you have to be rich to be in the war room. A lot of people see the war room as these just like successful businessmen with loads of money, but. If you were to ask Andrew or Tristan, I would imagine they would say something along the lines of, you can be rich and still be a dork. You can be rich and still yeah. be, you know what I mean? Yeah, wow. You can, there's a lot of people in this, in this life that have money and walk around looking down at people and treating people disrespectfully, saying things that they just feel like saying because they feel like money will just get them out of it. Whereas the war room's different. That's more about brotherhood and respect. Once you can respect someone, provide value and understand brotherhood, then comes the money. Money's like the last thing. For sure. So it's, it's about creating a bond. So everyone I know, f straight up, I could do, do a deal with anyone in the war room. They would never, ever snake me, ever. 
That's mad. Because the risk is just too high. Mm. Imagine it. Two and a half thousand Gs and you're the only one that fucks up. Mm. And everyone knows who you are all over the world. That's so true. Oh, yeah, well, and I'm never like, going to do business with him again. Everyone's going to be like, tarnished, see this yeah. guy, no, fuck tarnished. him. If you ever see him, don't. Do you know what I mean? You just be basically fucked. blackballed for life. Bro, yeah. Oh. Imagine trying to rip Tate off for one end. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to go to sleep at night, wouldn't you? <laughs> no, <laughs> ever again. You'd die with lack of sleep. <laughs> That's mad that you've met, like, met how you've, what you've done in such a tiny space of time mm. is fucking crazy. What about prior to the no warrant? Like, how did you, what were you doing prior to that point? See, I think, I think a lot of things happen in life with any individual, man or woman. It's just, if you subject yourself to something for a long enough period of time, you have the break, you have your break, don't you? You know, mm. there comes a point where you just break through, you know? So my, my intentions were always, were always the same. I always walked around, whenever I walked around and I met new people, I always spoke to them like they were somebody important. I always made sure that I was dressed well. Again, I had good manners. Um, I always made sure that I would open the door, just do small things that just, they just accumulated to the bigger things. And I think having money is very, very important because you need to have that capital there to be to to be ready when it when the time comes. But in the meantime, I just think before that, all the way up, it was just very, very consistent. No matter what it was, if it was business that I was subjecting myself to, I mean, going to that and I have a CEO, she looks after my business for me. You know, I report I report to her and she reports to the directors. It very much, you know, it's outsourced. It's a vehicle which runs effectively. It took me about seven years to build that off the back of being a shit mechanic. And, you know, <laughs> it just kind of, it all, I don't want to sound too cheesy, but the stars align eventually if you just subject yourself to it, you know? And uh, Robert Down Downey Jr. said something quite interesting. He said, there's some times where you just sat in a room and there's four pictures and there's four pictures on the wall and which one's got the safe behind it. It's that one. And you open it, it's there, you know, something, sometimes things just happen, mm. you know, at the right time and the right moment and you're right about it. So I think, yeah, that's where, that's where all that comes from, bro. Well, why did you choose you? So you've obviously got a successful business. It's been, you said it took seven years to get to this point. Mm. Why did you choose the limelight now? I think, oh, that's a great question. I think that choosing the limelight at any point or period before where I am now would have been nothing less than irresponsible. And the reason for that is because, I wasn't gonna say this, but I'm gonna have to now because about a month ago, shortly after I'd been to the Tate's house, I was in a position where I could relieve my family of their debt. And it was, I was finding a lot of solace for liberation at the time. And it just kind of, yeah, it, it, got, it got to that point and I just, I just thought, right, now is the time to do it. Mm. I've, you know, sometimes you, I, I would wake up in the morning and I'd be like, my parents are, my dad's quite late, he's 72, my mom's 70. So I've got a duty and a service to provide to them before I can really think about myself. And I know that sounds crazy, but if you're going to bed every night and you're thinking about enjoying fucking life when your parents are tired, they're mm. fucking tired. And all they've done your entire life is try and raise you, bring you up, make sure you have the right fucking school shoes and just make sure that you have everything you need to, to give you the best possible chance of life. And you all you can think about doing is enjoying life. I just think it's quite a selfish move. And I know, look, I'm not saying I didn't go on last holidays before that, mm -hmm. but there just came a point where I had to sub subject myself to business, get that to a place where it did what it required. And then now it's time to think about me, you know? I'm not, spot on, yeah. I'm not yeah, saying it's crazy you say that because I'd say maybe like three, four months ago, me and the boys had this exact yeah. conversation. Yeah. Really? Yeah. We said as soon <laughs> as did, we've yeah. got, as soon as we're making proper peace from this, that's that's the first thing we're doing. We was, was, like, like, was like, what is our priority? What's our priority? We was like, the mum's is the priority. Yeah, mum's is the priority. Exactly. And like, we said, if we moved to Dubai, I'd fly my mum out there. I'd yeah. have right, right. her set up in Dubai, let her retire in Dubai. And we said like, or even if she doesn't want to move from Dubai, everything's sorted up for back home. Yeah. Mm. And that, that that was literally what we said. Number one priority. Is that's your priority stretch, right? Yeah. Set straight yeah, to me. That but I ain't got enough. Is. I'm not in a position yet to do it. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's why we're building this foundation first. Yeah. See, that's fantastic. And when you have a purpose like that behind a business, you're always going to succeed. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. People say like, Andrew's famous for saying this, oh, fuck passion. If you're in it for money. You're in it to make fucking money and that's it. If you follow your passion, okay, yeah, you do what you enjoy. But if you're there for the higher purpose, you're yeah. there to provide. For the ones that put you on planet Earth, you want to give back. Mm. Fantastic. Facts. Yeah, man. You're not, it's physically impossible to fail. Mm. If that's your main motive, it's impossible. Your time will come. I love that, man. Yeah, that's love spot that. on. And it, it doesn't even have on. to be just off the money aspect. Like obviously some people's parents are in a good position, but it's even 
being able to make memories with them by mm. you doing it rather than them. Like that's t like for example, my dad's he's he's well off, like he's retired. Mm. But it would mean it would mean more to me if I could say to him, right, don't worry, mate, I'm taking you here. I'm doing this, that, and the other for you. It's Absolutely. not it's, it's not the money he's looking at. It's the experience mm. we're having together. That's what would mean more to me more than just making money. So like you said, it's a higher purpose. Yeah, exactly, exactly. What advice would you give on the business side of that, Warren, in terms of like for the younger boys of today, instead of harping in, well, harping in on that point of not necessarily following your passion, but finding that real purpose as to why it is you want to fucking get out, out of bed in the morning and go and make some real money. Like, what is the message there? Like, what are you telling them to go and do instead of following their passion per se if mm -hmm. they're you know their passion might be football their passion mm -hmm. might be like which obviously there is money in that if they pursue it yeah so is there a fine line there or like what else are they doing if they're not following their passion oh, that's a great great question i don't i don't really think there's one particular script you could stick to there because yeah. everyone's different everyone has different skill sets and everyone needs to listen to their mind and i think the key the key thing here is actively engaging in a process of exploration so you need to just do different things mm -hmm. to realize what you're fucking good at and i don't just mean just like oh 10 hours here might pick up the guitar play for an hour and shit put it down i mean like hone in put your 50 hours in and then see where you're at and make an assessment a proper assessment and the more you kind of do that I think eventually you'll strike a bit of gold. You'll go, actually, I'm fucking pretty good at this. I don't care if it's fucking Sudoku, but you know, you're like, I'm, I'm sick of Sudoku. So what does that translate to? You know, we're sick of chess. What does that translate to? You can predict things, predict the future. You can mm. help yourself that way. So I would say, don't be scared to try whatever the fuck it is you want. If it's playing saxophone, if it's being a gymnast, if it's just anything, it's it sounds so cheesy, but I got my success from that. It's just being absolutely fearless and just doing whatever I wanted to do regardless of what people say. Mm. You know, that's the first thing you get critiqued at. People mm. just laugh. If you're shit at something, you, you get laughed at. But every legend of any, anything today was one shit at that, you know? So, so true, so yeah. So true. I think it's about it's about having that awakening and having that moment and having mm. that, oh shit, moment. I'm good at this. Yeah. You know? And yeah. then even if you're good at it and, and it doesn't happen, it's... The Rock famously said that the best thing that never happened to him was that he... Um, was became a football player. He, he wanted to be a football player, American football player. It didn't happen. And then now he's like superstar, world famous he's, wrestler. I think he's the most followed man on Instagram he as well is. now. We yeah. had this conversation literally the other day as well. We said, yeah. when things don't happen in, in the moment, you're like, for fuck's sake, I wish that, I, I wanted that so bad. And then I, I, I'm not going to recite it because I don't know word for word, but mm. um, Dan Buzerian was on a podcast once with yeah. Joe Rogan and it mm. was... Uh, he says, maybe. Have you, heard, have you heard when he talks about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he says, oh, the your, Chinese proverb. The, yeah, the Chinese proverb. And he says, he says, maybe. Like, we had something happen to us the other day. I think someone let us down or something like that. And I was like, boys are like, oh, pissed off. It's like, maybe. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Maybe it's, yeah, maybe it's not a bad thing. Maybe it. it's not a bad thing. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And then, Joe, you know what, yeah. what, how that actual situation transpired was actually. That's the, that's the real that Merck has sent into the group, wasn't it? Yeah. You, you set that into the group, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, our manager was asking about it. Was yeah. Like it was something to do about, yeah, a proverb where. The son a war soldier broke his legs, couldn't go to war, that's can't it, fight, yeah. stayed yeah, home. It's the Chinese farmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's so true. You don't know. You don't know what doors opening from what failure you've got in front of you, or mm. what thing that didn't work out for you in that sure. moment. Exactly. And then the, this is where it gets really difficult, is because when when you look at someone that that tries very hard at something and then continuously fails. The more you fail, the more people will say to you, bro, this isn't for you. Mm. I think maybe Chris for you back junior might be a good example of that is a lot of people said to him, every time he lost, everyone was like, bro, you're not actually that good. Stop it. You're a failure. And he was just like, I'm not listening to anybody. This is my path. This is my career. And I would argue he's done quite well as a boxer, mm. you know? So that's where it gets tricky is to go, right. It's to, it's to submit and go, I actually am shit at this, which is what I did with mechanics. Mm. Or it's to go, do you know what? I'm the fucking mechanic and continue fixing lorries and wagons. But I was like, if I do that, someone's going to fucking die because I'm going to leave wheel loops and then someone's going to fly out the M5 and that's it. It's all going to be over. So I didn't want that to happen. So Was there a pinnacle moment in your life, Warren, where that, well, other than the mechanic moment, I suppose, where something didn't work out that you wish it did and then it later on transpired for you to look back and go, do you know what? I'm fucking glad actually that didn't work out the way it, I wanted it to. Yeah, absolutely. I had a lot of opportunities with reality TV. A lot okay. of opportunities. Yeah, that cropped up a lot in my life. And I don't want to say it's matrix controlled because I know, I know you had to go. <laughs> <laughs>
But so did he. But <laughs> <laughs> Matrix agent over there. <laughs> <laughs> Undercover. That's why he didn't like getting Pop G's out. Because <laughs> 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 me and Joe point at him as well. He doesn't know about me, mate. He does Top enough. G was like, I've seen that guy before. <laughs> X on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> fuck that show. Fuck that show. <laughs> fuck that show. <laughs> fuck that show. <laughs> Literally, fuck that show. <laughs> That's a dead show. It's a dead, dead show. I can't believe you went on that. I can't believe you went on that. I can't believe you went on that. What did you do? You're the pioneer. Oh, I thought you was on that. I was making attraction. That's what you were on that. You were on season four, yeah. I was on. It was making sense to have a as well. But you know what? It's funny you should say that because I know this is your podcast, but that was. I would I would always class that was as a failure because it it never actually went into what I wanted to go, what I thought it was going to go into. Sorry, mm. I was 19 years old at the time. I'm 28 now. So how right, old you okay. was then? Yeah, nine years ago, I went on that show. Nine years ago, so I went wow. on that show at 19, mm. and I thought it, that show then was massive. I think it was before Love Island, so it was huge. Mm. And I thought this is this is I might actually something might become of this. I mean, because Geordie Shaw was massive at the time as well, so I thought that's what was going to transpire, mm. and it flopped. Well, I flopped. So loads of people went off to do well, but I flopped on it. But here's the thing, right? So I'll use Jack Fincham as an example because he's a bomb. <laughs> but he went on Love Island and he won Love Island. Right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Did he win it? I think so. No, yeah, yeah, he did, he yeah. won it. Why is he still a loser? <laughs> <laughs> it's on him. How many people come out of Love Island? How many people come off these shows and don't make success? Mm. Right? It's luck of the draw. There's a bit of that. Yeah. But how old are you at the time? 19. You were 19, bro. How do you expect anyone that's 19 years of age yeah. to know what to do? Yeah, right. How to monetize off any kind of clout when you literally. Had Social your... media game wasn't the same then either. It's not, it yeah. wasn't the same, yeah. And exactly. I got kicked off the show. Was that... <laughs> oh, do you? What, what well, no, I, no, I didn't know. Well, I did. I had basically a heart virus. I didn't tell them. Oh, shit. I didn't want them to not let me on the show. They found the meds in my bag oh, when geez. I was out doing it on a date. And then I come back from the date and they said, what were these meds? And I had to come clean. And then the next day home, I was on the flight home, but they made up a whole cover story. Brutal. Why they kicked me off. Brutal. So that like, like, and I was gutted and I was like, whatever. But that all led into other stuff mm. that I never thought would have ever happened. I, I honestly believe this podcast wouldn't be here today if I didn't go on that TV show. Mm, Cause not. I would have never met you. Yeah. And you would have probably never told him about the podcast about me. Yeah. It's, and it's all into links. It all interlinks this all in happened. Way. And that was nine years ago, mm. but there's still still people recognize me for today. Like very, very, very few. I get more people off podcasts now. Yeah. What I'm saying is that failed, but now I feel like this is a success. Mm. You so know what I'm saying? Thing, so you, at some point, so the, the stars line with some people. So yeah. some people hit the show. They've actually got a bit of a business mind. They've got a business background or they have someone in the background that can help them with the yeah. business mm -hmm. or, or teach them to monetize from it at the time. But some people don't. And that's just the harsh reality of the game, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it? You can generate an audience, but then it's about the conversion rate from that audience. Isn't it? How do you convert? No one fucking so knows. True. No one knows at the time. So don't don't be hard on yourself on that. I mean, that's just character building at its best. If you can if you can be 19 years of age and be selected for a show like that, I didn't even make it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you, you smashed the fucking arse off of that, in my opinion. Mm. You've sat there. They've gone, this guy's sick. He's camera ready. He's, he's going to be good for TV. So let's get him on the show. That is a win. It's a huge win. Yep. And it sets you up for the rest of your life because you can carry that confidence with you. Mm. How many people wanted that show at the time? Everyone wanted Probably a lot, that show. Yeah. Yeah. It's that as well. And you know, if you think about it, at that age, do you think you really knew what you wanted? But I never even, you know, so, the truth, I never watched TV reality. Right, no, so my, point, TV, my point is, if you come off the back of that with a shitload of clout at that age and you started getting a lot of attention, it could have led you down different paths as well. And It's only at this age now, like as men, we mature after a certain age and we start to understand by doing certain things how you can kind of, it, it depends how you view it, right? You can, that's either going to go into, in a positive way or a negative mm. way. There's so many reality TV people that have gone on TV, mm. come out of clout and gone down very dark holes. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Down dark holes where they're, we don't, suicide, we, we, exactly, yeah, we exactly. Suicide. Mike Fowler, the geezer was on Love Island, unreal yeah. looking yeah, geezer. Yeah, yeah. No one would have who's, ever expected it. Who's that it. poor girl as well that committed to call off? But there's loads, mate. So the yeah. point I'm making is, you don't know where that would have led you. Yeah, so true. The way I would see it is now you're ready to utilize from what you're doing and put it into into the right places because and into a good message as exactly. well exactly because that that tv reality is bullshit everything everything they're all spitting off on, on social media is all i agree anyway. the one thing i would say is that like early 20s i always thought it was about having fun this that and the other like just mm. fucking about basically boy was i wrong i think the best thing you could have done was in your 20s is set yourself up mm. for your 30s yeah. so you're in a much better position so personally like if i was speaking to anyone now when i do i said don't spend your 20s just fucking about Find some, find the craft, whether it's like forever or not, like master it and crack on because trust me, by the time you get to your thirties, when you'll think shit, 
I'm a decade away from 40. I had to sort my shit out. Yeah, yeah facts. Yeah. That's the best piece of advice you could give any young person, in my opinion. I absolutely agree with you. <coughs> I do. Yeah. And that's where the confusion is. It's because when, when you're us lads and you're brought up around Geordie Shaw and the boys and going out pulling birds and <laughs> all that sort of stuff, you see that as fun and success. You're, yeah. one, you're getting brainwashed by 100%. these guys, aren't, aren't we? So, oh, what's that? Still not subscribed yet? Oh, what's that? Still got no airline? Subscribe, you fuckers, so I can go and get my hair down, will you? <laughs> so true. We actually, we actually was getting brainwashed. <laughs> yeah, we actually that's was. what it is, bro. Think about it, you are. Conditioned. Look, yeah. You're being conditioned. conditioned. Believe that is, that's, that's, that's success. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, not... don't get me wrong, it's, it's fun, isn't it? Yeah. But, yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a lot we of fun. We love the sex boys. <laughs> <laughs> mate, when I saw the skis are in Newcastle, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We love the sex boys. Not all we're broke. Not all we're broke. We hate the sex boys, bro. Do you not think it's weird how... The, how the stars align with this? How you come onto this show? Yeah, so random, so weird, man. He, yeah. who, I've who, said it to these. Who messaged you? Merck messaged Merck Merck messaged you, and then literally a week later, you're in Newcastle with him. Oh, when, he, he, when he sent the photo what? in the group chat, that boy look who I've just bumped into. Like, and it was you two. For you two to me on that exact night was crazy. Yeah, oh, it was crazy. after a few days of Merck messaging him, I thought it was mental. I was literally like, boys, look how small the world is. And just sent a picture of me and him in. I was like, I have to send to the boys, bro. I was like, quick sell me, let's Straight send away, it. Straight away, I woke up in the morning like I was like, no fucking way he's with him. What the fucking chance is that? I was, uh, it's funny, because I, I was sitting down, obviously watching watching the boxing, and I was sat with uh, that porn star, El Brook. Yeah. yeah. I sat with her, and then, Haram. <laughs> <laughs> sat with her, keyword sat. <laughs> On her face. <laughs> and uh, obviously, Ozzy walked past me, and I was just like, Clocked you instantly. I was like, that's one of the graphic kings, 100%. It is. And she was like, what are you on about, mate? I was like, never you mind, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. I love and that. Then, uh, and then I walked off, came up to you, and I was, how's it going, bro? We had the moment. And then before I know it, we were three seats to the wind in China White. <laughs> Literally, just in China White, going up and down. <laughs> I was like, to you, I was like, to you, I was like, bro, should we take a selfie? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. I got my phone out. We took this selfie. <laughs> he, was, he just looked at me like as if to say how does two good, good looking men take that the picture that bad, bad. <laughs> it was bad did we, did we take a piss out of your photo your yeah. eye was all like he, I mean, he sent me a couple of those like, Ozzy goes none of these are making the internet I was like don't worry bro I won't put it up we look like yeah. a couple of monsters bro <laughs> <laughs> you humbled me mate like, the session does this. that the session does that we, we look good to be honest but not really mate you always do it's like when you take a girl you think it's good and then you make a Oh, went, yeah, yeah, oh, exactly. Oh. I thought we looked wicked in that photo last time. <laughs> nah, not, not, mate, even under the influence, I was like, no, we look awful in that, mate. Can't be putting up anyway. Talking anywhere. about awful. No, I'm not talking about that. <laughs> I, knew, I nearly had a career ending incident in Newcastle. <laughs> I fully would have, like, you, wow. I, I would have jumped out that window. He man. left the club with her and everything. And like, we was bro, all. Um, monster, what was the word? A monster. A monster. We're going to have to pull this back to the start, right? Okay. From the top, what happened? Right. right, so we we're on this table, we're having a bit, bit of fun on that. <laughs> All the boys are cracking on, and uh, I looked to my left, and I was like, "Why is Why is Merck talking to that monster over there?" <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then, and I went, Ozzy went, "What's he doing? He's better than that." And I went, "Bro, that's fucking horrendous. What's going on here then?" And then. He was just like, just like laughing and his arm around her and I was thinking, but that arm around her, I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that did. Oh, oh, no, she was lap dancing in. She was all oh, yeah, she, she was, she was lap dancing in the chair. She, she, she had no heels on. Oh yeah, she had, she had her heels in her hand and flip flops on in the club. And then, uh, I was like, should we tell so him? Why is that bloke <laughs> dancing on Merck, bro? What's <laughs> <going>? <laughs> he was like, let him make the mistake. He's I got to learn from me. You know what the worst thing is? <laughs> I, I, I left. And none of you even tried to stop me. <laughs> Wait, the, the funniest thing was, we, me and you, were friends. Me and you went for a piss. We walked out the toilet, and he's running past. He was no, no, keep going. And I was like, where have you been? I made a mistake. I made a mistake. I come out into like the, the light, and I've just looked at her, and something happened outside, and I was just like, what happened outside, Burke? Go on. Just came out of a trance. Go on. What happened outside? What did Burke? you see her doing? She, she just started pissing in the middle of the road. Oh, oh, and I just looked there and I was just like, Newcastle I'm better fighting. than this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just ran. That, that, that would have ruined your life. I, would, I don't feel like a bounce next back. Thing I know, he was next to me. I was like, bro, what are you doing back here? He was like, I'll tell you later. We, we would have kicked him off the pod if he went through with that. Mm. And then fast forward to Monday, 10-10. Monday late. was yesterday. Yesterday. What do you mean after our dating show? Yeah. I love how that's, that's how far it took. It took her to be squatting in the street for you to be like, 
Yeah, yeah, the same yeah. for me. No, not, not, uh, the, 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 not the monstrosity just... anyway. We actually found a video of her on my phone the next day on the train home. Do you remember? Yeah, it was right. I think you had a tooth missing as well. Yeah. Oh, only... fuck off, boys. No, I'm being serious. It did. You only had a tooth. Had a lot of... But this is, tooth. this is also a testament to women out there that you don't actually have to look that good to get attention, right? So mm. this, this is a perfect example. Really, yeah. is you, can, <laughs> you can go out there and be a shit four out of ten. <laughs> And still pull a man like man, man, man like Merck, John. It's, it's so true. It's so true. Women just need to be there. What's your yeah, uh, right, yeah. What's your relationship status like, bro? What are you up to? Or, like the dating scene? Are you dating? Are you seeing anyone? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I chopping? like to keep things. I like to protect what means the most to me. I don't, yeah, like, to go, I don't like to go public with it. You know. I mean, let's face it. Look what happened to Logan Paul when he was fucking. <laughs> oh, <sick. but> <laughs> oh wow! Guy got ripped in your asshole, didn't he? So no thanks. Well, that's because he didn't do a CRB. Yeah, but he didn't do a CRB. Do you think he knew? He must have known. No, I don't think, mate, some, some guys get blinded oh, by Oh, mate, it. it's great. Yeah. Every day on Twitter, there's like a good morning and a new picture. Though. Yeah. Yeah. He's an animal. He's, he's selling that fight. Yeah. Uh, You're is, gonna, yeah. Everyone's going to watch the fight, aren't they? They are going to watch it. Yeah, I, I agree. But just fuck being that guy. Because you imagine the conversation that he has when he gets home. He's like, babe, what do we do about this? Yeah, like, he's just like, I sucked it. a dick in a fucking football field once. And it's just oh. like, oh, yeah, fuck. What do you do about that, bro? Yeah. That's your wife. You you know have to deal with that. I don't think I could go through with it. I'd have to call it off. I'd have oh, to call marriage it. is done, isn't it, mate? Finish. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah, once or be. twice, you'd be like, all right, oh, but yeah. like, there's like hundreds, mate. Yeah. I mean, yeah, everyone, everyone. photos. Just, where you everyone, you think it? when he's out in them circles now as well, like you are gonna bump into and shake someone's hand. He's just a simp, though, isn't he? Slipped up your missus. Mm. Simpy behaviour. Right. Speaking <laughs> about the the YouTube boxing world, going back a bit. So it's touching on what you said about Logan Paul. So after after you tell me that you're gonna beat Jack. Who's next? Who mm. who has on? Call him out. I think at this stage right now, what I need to do, I need to be honest with myself and everyone else. I'm going to on the fight right now. So I need to go in there and put on a clinical performance, squash Jack, show everyone what I'm about, and then it's time to call someone out. If I sit here now, calling okay, everyone fair, out like yeah. a dickhead, fair enough. I ain't showed you what I'm about. Fair play to you. It's not yeah. real, is it? Yeah. You know? I can sit here and be like, yeah, this guy's getting it, this guy's getting it. It's like, well, you know, come on, mate. 24th of November, right? 24th of November. Do you know, though, in your head, who you want to go after next? Uh, you, you, say, you, you give you know. me, don't tell us, but you, obviously you've come across as obviously a very calculated individual. Mm. So I can bet a bottom dollar that you've got obviously someone in your mind thinking, once I whitewash this guy, yeah. I know who I want next. I think the the ultimate path really would be something along the lines of what, what every YouTube boxer is doing. The, the most successful point they can hit is when they cross over to fight in a real boxer, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's when they've, they've whooped everyone on the YouTube scene and it's like, right, this guy's got something about him. Mm. So now it's time to fight a real boxer. Mm. So, the, I mean, the nice one will be the Tommy Fury fight. Yeah. That would be there. That would, if, you know, if that ever comes way. about. Uh, what, are you, what are you fighting at? I'm, well, I'm, I'm eighty. I walk around about 85. Okay, so he yeah. could, yeah, he's, he's middleweight and he'll cruise yeah. away. So we could get down. Yeah. I could go up. It doesn't really matter. We'll make it happen. Um, and that would be nice. Depending on what happens with the, between him and KSI. Yeah. They're, they're the money fights, aren't they? Yeah, KSI, yeah, yeah. Jake Paul, Tommy Fury, all these mm. boys. That's where you want to go. I think any yeah. YouTube boxer would agree. Yeah. But on the route up there, there's, there's some slick guys, man. I mean, I'm, I'm good. To, um, I'm on good terms with Salt Pappy. He's a, he's a cool boxer, man. He's obviously, he's Filipino as well. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, we're like brothers a little bit. I see him as a, I see him as a bro. He's got a really slick boxing style. Um, he's a very good counter puncher. You know, he's just um, lost loads of weight. I think he was just like this big potato looking guy mm. and now he's just <laughs> shredded like Margin Boo, Dragon Ball looking character. Are you a Dragon Ball Z fan? Pro. My brother. I, I could you, talk to you about it. You <laughs> you, prom- you question me, quiz me. I know everything about separate, it. Separate podcast. Yeah? <laughs> you, Dragon Ball podcast. Oh, it's great. Cool. Everyone I've seen with... every episode. <laughs> every God. episode. Didn't you, say, what, was, didn't you say the character was the main reason you wanted to get into the gym, wasn't it? Yeah, Goku's the main. Yeah. Goku and Vegeta are the reason why I started gym. But we all want to be Super Saiyan. Yeah, yeah, always. Yeah, yeah. I tried Everyone. to be Super Saiyan. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> have you seen, uh, have you seen uh, Fresh and Fit's most recent podcast with uh, Neon? No. No, uh, he, I haven't. Basically, you know who Neon is? He's the YouTuber. Uh, yeah, he's a YouTuber, a streamer. Takes me on loads of streams of him. The one like with the blue hair? No, no, no. He's a. Uh, Indi- I think he's an Indian looking fella. He's bald. With the glasses. He's got glasses. Yes. Mm. So he, gets, yeah. but he got bullied and then Tate offered him to come to his house to train him. Geeky guy. Hey, uh, Hank does streams of Aiden Ross all the time. Can't think oh, of yeah, I know you're talking Geeky fella, yeah, geeky yeah, fella, yeah. right? Is he young? Yeah, yeah really. Oh, yeah. okay. No, he's, really right now. he's got an OnlyFans bird right now. He's just got a girlfriend. She's an OnlyFans girl. She's quite hot. And then, um, oh, what's the guy fresh and fit? I forgot his name. Fresh or fit? Marvin? Uh, <laughs> Mar- Mar- Whatever. Marvin. The, the main presenter of Fresh and Fit, he Myron, said. Myron. 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 Yeah. That's it. 
He said, they're both sitting on the pod, he, him and his girlfriend. He goes, she is cell stage one. All she's going to do is put the, uh, the these tail into you and drain you of all your uh, resources and yeah. then leave you after. Mm -hmm. That's what he's, and I, I, no one else could get that reference. I'll sit there going, no one else in the room got that reference apart from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you obviously know who Cell, obviously, you know, Dragon Ball Z fan, Cell. Yeah, Cell, yeah. But that was, it's mad how many people in the, in the world actually relate their lives to Dragon Ball Z, but yeah. But people outside of it don't even know what's going on about it. Exactly. And I say, actually, you know what? You are a Dragon Ball Z fan because your highlights are Dragon Balls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's like one to four star Dragon yeah, Ball. Yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah. Who's the picture? What's the yeah, DP about? Uh, so that is just an anime. That's 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 me in uh, Ultra Instinct, bro. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. So oh, I, wow. I've hit God form, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Instagram allowed it. So I was like, yeah, let's just do it. Oh, Instagram stick funny about having the photos. I think w when you when you go for the blue badge, they have to you have to verify. Oh, you know, fuck. Who oh you yeah, are. of course. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you have to have a picture of yourself when you're. Yeah, but they were just like, yo. You're, you're obviously a god, so you know, <laughs> ultra instinct your way through the Instagram. This who guy, you want, <laughs> do what you want. What's uh, what, what's free pass? What's Tate's opinion on the on the YouTube boxing world? So I, I suspect he has a very, I don't know actually. What, he has a very strong opinion about it in some kind of regard because yeah, I don't really, I don't really know what his opinion is on the YouTube boxing as as a whole, but I know that he respects any fighter that gets into ring, in the ring to fight. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you are, what yeah. background you come from, your experience, your level. He's very humble in his opinions when it comes to fighting, you know. Mm. And even, I mean, that the fight the fight with Ryan Garcia was almost a testament to that because when Garcia got hit with a body shot, he went went to one knee, and he was almost saying, you know, anyone that wants to have a go at Ryan Garcia can come at me first mm. because he's the one in there. He's the one that's putting it on the line yeah. and taking the risk. So it's all the credit to him and it's the credit to him only. But the the, the taste man, they're just, they're just absolutely outrageous people. They're just <laughs> outrageous on every single level. I mean, we must have smoked at least 100K in cigars, at least 100K <laughs> just in cigars in one weekend. Now, I know they might be, be billionaires, right? But they're they're so resourceful. Tristan kind of like lined us up and he was like, right, dickheads. My house is your house. There's the cigar box. If you'd like a cigar, smoke the full cigar. <laughs> right? <laughs> There's a bar over there. Drinks are on me. If you want to drink, drink the full drink. I don't want to see 30 half drank cups because you want to pussies. Drink the drink. <laughs> and then he was like, outside as a buffet. If you take some food, eat the full plate of food. <laughs> Don't leave it to go to waste because I will be fucking pissed off. And if I look at a cigar tray and there's like six, seven half smoked cigars, I'm looking at eight grand. <laughs> so don't do it. And we were just like, <laughs> <laughs> so the boys never smoked a cigar in their life. And they were like, this. <laughs> <laughs> fucking blue on the floor rolling around. That's Nicky hilarious. From hell. Dude, some of those cigars, if you do the whole thing, you can throw up. Yeah, Bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. I quite enjoy them. God, oh, I, I love some of these. Some people like that, mate. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> for sure. So, how, how is it? How is it? Because obviously, you, was in, you went there in July. Um, Andrew's been a Muslim since last year. Mm. How's the contrast between his brother and him? Because his brother's, uh, he, look, he reminds me of us boys. He just likes mm. drinking, smoking, yeah. chatting up birds. And then now Tate used to be that guy. Andrew yeah, used to be that yeah. guy, but now he's moved into the other side. So, how does that work? I think Andrew, Andrew got bored of the party life very quickly. He, he spent a lot of time doing it all of a sudden. And I think it just got to a point where he was just like traveling up and down the country, doing podcasts, mm. getting drunk, back of boats, jet skis, hose, whatever. He, I think he just got bored of it. Yeah. And he was just like, this is wrong. I'm changing religion. I'm I'd love gonna... to know what his pinnacle turning point mm. was where he just mm. went, you know what? I've He sort of sat there and gone, I've had enough of this now. I need to mm. switch up my view. You know he's an atheist once. Yeah, no, mm. that's, you know what? that's one question I'd, I'd love to ask him. Well, that is the first question I think I'd ever want to ask him if, and when I, hopefully I meet that guy and say to him, what was that moment where you fully accepted God into your life mm. and went, do you know what? I'm, I'm now, I'm converting to, to Muslim. I'm accepting mm. God and giving up everything. Like what? Because something has got, that's a major switch in your Lifestyle. reality yeah. of, and perception it's, of, it's, of life. Especially you know what I mean? when you've now got everything yeah you like for sure you can, you can have, have all the women in the world all the booze you, do, you never you don't have to worry and now you've chose to sacrifice it all yeah I, and i think at all the young boys all. in the world should look at that actually as a real fucking what's the word i'm looking testament? for not necessarily a testament but look at that as do you know what the whole party life and and the birds and the clubbing and uh, similar to what you said earlier warren 
that shit. Don't get it wrong, it's good fun. We all still like to have a laugh and do that sort of thing. But trust me, there there, there is an expiry date on that point. Mm. Yeah, 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 and absolutely. and like there is more to life. If if someone like that can have all that sort of money and have anything in the world that they want, and they choose to give it up and accept God into their life and go down that path instead, I think that's something that all the young boys should look at and go, do you know what? Don't just thrive to want to just chase chase the birds, chase the parties, chase the bottles. Like chase what you actually want to do in life and actually have a legacy that then you can look back on and be For proud sure. of. Do yeah, you know what I mean? Facts. I agree. I agree. Is there is there any like types of characteristics that you might have you feel like you maybe witnessed being being around them that some people might know or not know? Mm. Yeah, I think when you look at Andrew, you just think that as you grow up and you become more of a man and your responsibilities increase and your value increases, I think he just made an assessment one day and just went, look, this is how drinking makes me feel. And I'm just, I'm just spitballing and guessing here because yeah, sure. everyone knows it. This is how drinking makes me feel. It, it tarnishes my mind. It makes me feel weaker for whatever reason because I put poison into my body. My mindset the next day isn't where it should be. If I'm going to be capable and handle matrix attack back, back to back, I need to be sharp, on it, mm. powerful. If I'm going to be top G, God's going to test me. And that's how, what he believes. He got thrown in prison because God is going to test him. Mm -hmm. If you say you're this top G, this alpha male one that's going to be, a, like I said, testament to masculinity, doing the right things, then buckle up because what's going to happen is you're going to be in a jail cell and you know, you're know you going to be tested. So I think that's where that comes from. I think personally, whenever I've had a night out on the drinking, the next day, I just feel a bit fragile, a bit rusty, a bit, yeah. you know, yeah. you're just not really with it, are you? And you, God forbid, something bad that was to happen to you on that day when you're on a hangover, when you're feeling a little bit tender, it's just amplified, isn't it? It's, so it's going to be 10 times worse. Yeah. So I think if you're going to destroy yourself and and try and become powerful all at the same time, it's not going to work, is it? You fight a fire with fire. So I look at Andrew and I think, right, if he wants to become the most influential, the most powerful and the most responsible man in the world in terms of the hearts of younger men, then he has to think exactly like that man. For sure. It's like if you're going to be a fighter, if you're, if you're going to be a fighter, you have to think every single day, before I eat this, before I do this, is it going to make me a better fighter? If the answer is no, it gets thrown. If the answer is yeah, yes, wow. then you do it. So that's what I would take away from the boys as a whole. Tristan's crazy. He's nuts. Obviously, he loves <laughs> pie. He, leads, he has that famous thing where he's like, more booze. He said he's had it once. <laughs> and the boys just went off. Like, you know, it's like 10, 10 chickens in a room. One of them goes, Bop! and everyone goes, <laughs> <laughs> fuck me, bro. That was, one of the, that was like a key moment in there. We were sat in the war room, the, the actual war room where the, where the cigars are on the TV and all the iconic things happen. And we were just like drinking, smoking cigars. And one of the amazing things Tristan said, he was like, I just love it when I get a bunch of people in one room and I make them get fucked up because I can see which one of you fuckers is weak. <laughs> which one you can't. So like when you get to that selfie, you're like that drunk. So he he respects people that can handle themselves. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No matter how drunk you are, but then there's one guy that folds that and there was one knows. poor fucker there that just folded. <laughs> like a deck chair. Like a deck chair. He was like, get the fuck. You just, it just, do you know what I mean? It's just. What's Andrew doing when everyone's getting fucked up? Oh, he was in bed. <laughs> just, oh, really? I was like, fuck these losers. They're going on till late. I'm I'm going to bed. See you later. That's crazy. That yeah. is. Like... Yeah. But Tristan was just down there having some fun with the guys. And um, I think one of the things that you should think about in life is if you look at Andrew, you look at Tristan, is you should have at least one of them in your circle for it to be powerful and for it to work. Yeah. Because yeah. you've got five party boys. Guess, guess who you are? The sixth party boy, yeah. right? Yeah. But right. if you have like one geek, you have like one geeky guy that does things with logic, bit of a square, doesn't really dress well, but just understands how to do things technically, like a Bill Gates motherfucker. Yeah. And then you have... I don't know, like a Tristan, a cool guy that knows how to dress well, party, talk to girls. And then you have, I don't know, a guy that can freaking cook or something. <laughs> Just everyone needs to have an asset. Just you know what I mean? Nice balance, basically. And then come together. That's what makes a true, a truly powerful force, right? So I would I would say to most young people is that if you if you're in a, in a group of, you know, a group of men and you're all kind of like on the same page, I think it doesn't really work. One of you needs to have something different about each other for mm. it to work. I'm not talking like tattoos and teeth. I'm no. talking like skill set. <laughs> that, that's what worked out for uh, for me anyway. It's just having that, and that's what the war room kind of it's, kind of presents yeah. you with. Yeah. yeah, because you've got guys in there that are just like nerdy, but they're ultra good at making money. Yeah, they're just like financial beasts. Mm. And then you get guys like me, like hey boys, that are good at talking and chatting to birds and dressing well, and we kind of like feed off each other. Yeah. There. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a really interesting point. Talking of men, though, like what do you actually think of the men of this generation, the younger generation, the younger generation. Yeah. I think when you, when you look at a man and if I was going to describe a high value man, the, the, the kind of things I would be saying is that if I walk into his house, the first thing I would see is that it's clean. Yeah. He's got his shit together. 
Mm-hmm. He's tidy. His hygiene is in check. He's well-groomed. He's well-mannered. He makes you feel like you're welcome and you're safe. He makes you feel like if you wanted to, or if he wanted to, he could fuck somebody up, but he chooses not to. <laughs> like he needs to have multiple sort of assets about him as a man for him to become high value. And the problem with the men today is that there's still dickheads out there that are on Snapchat sending dick pics and simping. And the problem is that women are exposed to this and there's no control or regulation over that. So imagine being a woman these days, bro. It's hard to pick. Yeah. Mm. It's like just rubbing some through shit, isn't it? To get someone that's actually good and actually high value. And women often chase money. They often chase you know, material things. But again, if I, was, if I was a woman looking from the outside in, I'd be looking at real, real life skills. Mm. I mean, some people say that when I, if I see a white van man driving past, just like finishing a shift on a Saturday, all fucked up, covered in shit, covered in paint, I'm like, that guy's useful. Yeah, He's useful as fuck. Yeah. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care if he snorts cocaine and parties with the boys on the weekend. He's useful. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a step ahead of these guys that just sit home. And I, I don't want to say it, but lads that go to university these days find themselves in this useless category. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you, you hear it all the time. Oh yeah, went back to his apartment, his student accommodation. There was a fucking shit under the pillow. <laughs> he hadn't got his stuff together. He's had like shit under his fingernails. Doesn't brush his teeth. Yeah. Eating spaghetti on toast. Yeah, spaghetti on toast. Fucking what's it called? Pot noodles all the time. He's in debt. Go by... gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Doesn't really go gym. If he if he can, he gets to pure gym and it's with the lads. Doesn't really get work <laughs> out gym. <laughs> Using someone else's code. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know you know what I'm saying is that that's the problem with today is I think a lot of society is being pushed down this funnel, mm. which is almost destined for failure. So the ones that kind of make it out from the sides and get awakened by like, I don't, I don't want to sound like a fucking a Tate minion, but Andrew Tate is waking young men up. He's yeah, making yeah. them go, shit, we've got it all wrong. Yeah. Since since we went to school and we were put in this kind of like, almost military practice of what's yeah, right and course, what's wrong, yeah. we've, uh, we've been led astray, so. They yeah. say school's built to train work for, for future workers. Yeah, isn't it? It yeah, is. yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. Be here at this time. Yeah. You, you want to do this from this time you to this your time. Lunch at that your time. lunch time. Yeah. Mm. And it's, then it's when, you, when you, you, yeah, so in conditions, when you go to exactly. work, it's normal. Oh, I've done this, I've done this kind of pattern before. Yeah. But now I'm doing it and I'm getting paid for it. Oh, wow. Yeah, it I'm makes sense. I mean, it. oh, it's yeah. hence why, obviously, Andrew's woken so many people up mm. and they don't want that because the more people wake up, then the less there is people to put into these to these types of corporate type of businesses, the nine to five type of person. Mm. So it's kind of ending that cycle. That's it. You flip the coins with the, the nine to five guy. There's some people that are just fucking happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nothing work, wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, five, and they just do it, and they go home. And they go, do you know what? I had a great day. My bills are paid. My wife's happy. Mm, perfect. I can go on yeah, holidays four yeah, times yeah, yeah. a year. Happy days, and that's that's cool. But it's the ones that stay there and then complain. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. That's you. Hit that's the it. The head there. There's nothing wrong with doing a nine to five if no. you're happy and you're getting by, and there's nothing wrong with your life, but. The ones that always complain, oh, I fucking hate this and this is shit. My wife's fat. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. My wife's fat. <laughs> she ain't had a shave for two weeks. <laughs> yeah, she ain't had a shave for two weeks. <laughs> Edward says and, hands, mate. Yeah, yeah oh, fuck that. Yeah, I mean, they don't do nothing about it. They change That's the life. one thing that I don't like at the moment with the content that is out there, though, is the fact that they say if you are in a nine to five, then you're unsuccessful. And I think you can't preach that. Like, if you still need to start somewhere to be able to go self employed yeah. if that is your mission. So, again, I think Merck said this at some point. It was like, mm. don't just. Don't just kind of quit your job and just do absolutely nothing. Do your job, do your nine to five, mm. grow your grow your uh, pot of money, whatever it is you need <laughs> to do, and then get out of that. Because I feel like the content we watch, it's almost like if you're under nine to five, you're unsuccessful. And there's so many like little programs out there now teaching a craft, and a lot of them is bullshit. Yeah, mm. facts. A lot of them is bullshit. Facts. There's so much you can learn from a nine to five. Mm. Go in there, know what it's like, then you know what you really want to do. Okay, I want to get out of this. So I think, Bro, I learned to sell and selling is a very important part of life for my mm. nine to five. Thank you, yeah. If you didn't, I've Everything you're selling. I, yeah, every, I'm, you're always selling. Yeah. You're selling yourself, you're selling selling the always idea selling of the podcast. Something. Selling, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Everything's selling, everything's selling. And my job taught me that. If I didn't have that job, I wouldn't have ever learned how to do that. For sure. And it also taught me how to engage in meetings as well. Mm. My my manager that I'm with now, he taught me everything I know. When you go into a meeting, how to present yourself, how to, how to structure the meeting, mm. how to gain control of the meeting. Yeah. And put yourself in a position of power, follow up. Do you know what I'm saying? But yeah. I would have never learned them skills personal about the nine to five. Yes, yeah, personal development. So yeah. I feel like someone actually did something as Gary Vee said, if you're going to do a nine to five, <clears throat> try and do something that's going to mirror what you want to do after. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can grab, you can try and do- Transferable skill set. Transferable skill set. Right. Exactly that. 
do a sell stage one, yeah. milk it for everything it's worth, and then fuck <laughs> off and use it for yourself. That's it. Yeah, no, I agree. Warren, how do you keep the um how do you keep a balance between like enjoying yourself, doing all the fun stuff, but then obviously cracking on? Because obviously you seem like a very motivated guy. You speak very well, you look the part. How do you keep that balance in between how we was in Manchester, or not Manchester, Newcastle, and actually like getting down to business and cracking on with work? Yeah, I mean that's that's a great question. I think you have to spend the majority of your time grafting. Mm. Uh, you boys literally have a podcast around it. And I just, I hold that, you know, that's the first thing that happens before I do anything. And Andrew had a fantastic way of explaining it. When he wakes up in the morning, he has all, this, all these businesses. He sees it as like a block of flats, right? So, so there's a block of 10 flats, right? And there's a fire on floor 10 and eight. He has to focus on putting the fires out. So that, that's why you just want to wake up in the morning. I'm like putting the fires out. Um, whatever needs my attention, I just I just get straight to it. Mm. Non-negotiables. And then once you've kind of met that, then you just fall into what you want to do, you know? But when you get to a position in life where you've thought of a business model, made it successful, turned it into a vehicle, outsourced it to a level where there's a responsible, capable, trustworthy person, person there to manage it for you, that's when the world kind of opens opens up for you. And I don't know if you know who Iman Ghazi is, but he's a young, yep. yeah. young entrepreneur. It's smashed the, the arse off of life, in my opinion. But he spent a lot of his years as a younger kid in the darkness. No one knew who he was. Mm. He was a bit geeky, a bit techy, but he did for what, arguably 10 years, say from 15, not 15, even younger than that, wasn't it? Um, but he's essentially, he had seven to nine years of business experience but while we were still fucking about yeah. going out clubbing and pubbing and doing what we were doing. So if you subject anyone to 10 years of solely business and making money, guess what's going to happen? Mm. You're going to make money. So I think when you're talking about balancing the party life, I was actually a relatively late guy. So I was spending a lot of time. I was like you boys, you know, you're watching Jolly Shaw, you're partying, you're going out, necking on with birds, doing that. I had loads of fun doing that. Yeah. But then I hit a moment when... I must have been like, I don't know, 28, 29, at least. I, I actually moved to the UK when I was 22. I got away from the Isle of Man and moved to the UK and to start a new life. Because I got involved with drugs. I got involved with fucking around wow. with the wrong people. I got involved with the sale of drugs and it just didn't do me any favors. I was one way, one way ticket to jail, mm. you know? And when I got to the UK and had this kind of like awakening, my journey started from like 22, 23. So from 23 to like, 29 that's where i had that period of like balancing yeah, the sesh sure with learning how to make money and learning how to you know the build relationships yeah. and, and 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 progress from there but again this is a, this is why there's so much controversy around masculinity because what we're trying to do now is be masculine and i don't believe toxically masculine is is a word. It's yeah, not yeah, really. yeah, it, it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. It's, connect. A buzz, it's a buzzword, isn't it? It, it doesn't really make sense if you mm. think about it, because you can be a toxic person, but being masculine is actually a fantastic thing. Yeah, mm. as a man, it's, it's, it really is fantastic. So, when we're like, we've now hit this this Tate era where young men are, are understanding how to be masculine, but at the same time, it's the same people, it's the same women that hate on the idea of it. Yeah. Yeah. I've always got fucking blue hair, fat, <laughs> overweight, <laughs> vegan activists. It's always the same criteria. <laughs> Shit experience with men. My ex-boyfriend was a 15 year old fucking kid, 15, 18 year old kid on Snapchat, <laughs> sending dick pics, yeah. probably 15, selling drugs. I know they have, they've had a bad experience with a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now they've gone all men are dickheads. And it's, they, they've categorized us into this toxically masculine space. And oh, he's controlling, he's insecure. All these words are being used. But if you actually spend time with a man that's truly masculine, capable, professional, can provision for you, can do things for you that a man's supposed to do, mm. it's actually a fantastic experience yeah. for a woman. Yeah, if you're a woman and you actually are in that frame, and in that energy of a man, it's a game changer. And Facts. I've seen it happen over and over again. Women have this persona, they come across our oh, boss babe, winning in life, yeah. fresh and fit, covered it fantastically. But when they actually get into that frame of a man that's got his shit together, all that- Goes out the window. Goes out the window. Said and they, that. Just, and yep. they, they just go, right, this is what it's all about. Mm. Mm. So it's facts, man. Hit them hit the yeah, down well, on the head there, literally. Mm. <clears throat> I just say, wait till things go tits up. Who are these people going to want there? They're going to mm. want the masculine strong man they there. Mm. They're not going to want like, Someone who's a sim, someone who's too feminine to be there. They're gonna want, like, if we went into Someone's war, who, 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 who are you gonna want there? That's what it comes yeah, down I, to. I, amen. Do you um, how many suits do you own? <laughs> I can't even count, bro. Really? Yeah, yeah. When did your suit collection start? I must have 
I must have started collecting suits when I was like 23. Oh, fuck. Bet Jack doesn't own a suit. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your suit, Jack? <laughs> well, charity shop number for the races, I bet. <laughs> I mean, oh, dear. Have it. <clears throat> that suit. <clears throat> I wonder if he's going to turn up to the pod next week. Yeah. <clears throat> I think he'll show up. And I bet you he doesn't show up in a suit. I've called it. And if he hears this right now, don't go to the shop, Jack. He won't hear be real. This, this will be three weeks, four weeks <laughs> delayed, so he hasn't got an opportunity to wear a suit. No chance. <laughs> no chance, my friend. <laughs> Getting it. You I, could, I could wear this in the ring and whoop him still. <laughs> Honestly. I'd love to see that. It's never been done before, has it? <laughs> <laughs> we should make it out. Do you wear a suit everywhere you go? Even like, so say, I don't know what your relationship is, you don't have to go into it, but say you're taking a gun on the first date, would you turn up like that? No, no. I think I turn up wearing a suit when... I feel like I've been invited into someone else's home. When yeah. I feel like someone is having me there as a guest, I think if I don't show up wearing the proper clothes, it's almost an insult, almost an insult, you know? Because, I mean, if I invite someone around my house and my boy's not wearing a suit, I'm not going to kick <laughs> off. You know? It's not like, bro, where's your fucking, where's, where's your Oxford bros and tie? It's not going to happen. <laughs> but I think what I mean by that is, is that I've come into your town today. You boys are entitled to wear whatever the fuck you want. This is your town, but I'm the guest. So, you know, I have to show up. And like I said, I've good manners. Dressing well is a yeah, form. It says a lot about you. Manners. It's a fucking yeah, nice suit. Thank you, bro. I've never tried that contrast before, the red with the black on the outside. That's not the do, do you know what? I actually got this suit in, in, uh, in Book Arrest. And this is, uh, this is the John Wick bad guy look. It is, yeah. yeah like John Wick, oh, the evil, wow, yeah. uh, the evil uh, Russian, Russian guy. Yeah, the you one what? Gets You've inspired in the me because uh, I mean, we're going to Thailand in two months. And every time I go to Thailand, I get a, a personalized suit. They go in there and they like, build it around your whole body. Like, it's banging. G, yeah. G energy. Every, every, notes, every time I go. Every time I go. And that's, uh, I've always, I was thinking, what, what style am I going to get this time? Always get a nice cashmere. It's normally gray or light color. But I think I'm going to go for a dark Talking suit. Talking my language now. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been to Thailand? I think me and you are going to get along very well, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Cashmere, you both Dragon is, Ball. You've both been sitting here like this the whole time. Well. <laughs> <laughs> <They're> both, <Yeah. laughs> both got the same kind of haircut. <laughs> you two, are we two best friends? Yeah, we, we best friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that, We man. do, don't we? It's not babes. Yeah, literally. <laughs> 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 Fuck it, so let's go on, I got bro. a little, uh, bro. I got a little, sort of like maybe a little, little closing question for you, bro. Yep. If there was some um, one, maybe two key attributes that you feel as though every young man should work on himself to have, what would they be? Key attributes to have as a, as a young man today mm. to work towards. That's a great question. There's just so many. I've got so many answers for that one. But the first thing that kind of comes to mind is that. Wherever you are right now, I would say when things go bad, they can come good very fucking quickly. Mm. And when things are good, they can turn bad very quickly, almost in an instant, mm. like day and night. So prepare yourself for when the day, when the darker day comes and prepare yourself for when the days of light come because when they come, you need to be calculated and not get overexcited and understand that you're in a position of power and you can capitalize on it. A lot of people get lost in the glory. I remember when the first time I ever made some money and the first thing I did is went out and bought a yellow Audi R8 because I'm a G and I want a fast car. <laughs> and I remember walking into the garage, chip and pin motherfucker, put it in there. And then I drove it off. And then like two hours after, I was like, what have I done? <laughs> You know, oh, wow. at the point of power is where the devil shows up mm. and, he's, and he's there ready to wipe you out. So I don't regret it, but I know now that was actually a pretty feminine thing to do. That's a very emotional, over emotional thing to do. Oh, that's so true, man. If I ever come into any money now, I'm calculated. I go, right, this is a resource. This is paying staff wages. It's putting a roof over the head. It's keeping a roof over my head. Don't be reckless. And... Spider-Man, great power, great responsibility, right? Yeah, true, yeah, so yeah. the higher you climb the ladder, the further you go up, you just need to start being more strategic and don't be emotional. Don't have those emotional feelings and just, you know, keep them at bay. If you've got a scroll on auto, tra auto trader for a little bit and then just close your phone afterwards, <laughs> cool, get it done. But guilt free scroll. But that's what I would say is that there's a dark and a light to every situation and be prepared for both because it can happen at any time. Mm. Wow, yeah. It's powerful. Yeah, yeah. It's powerful. really good. Yeah, really that. good. Wow, that's good, man. That's good. Loved it. Loved it, man. That yeah. was a fucking good part. Yeah, great chat. That a lot. I good feel like we could have sat here all night. I want part two. We got, we got, we'll do a part two. We'll Unlimited reels, boys. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think I know when we should do part two. Once you've had the fight. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's cool. That'd be great. If we was uh, in a bet, 
We've got a lot going on in the next few Why months. Why don't you come to Dubai? I was just yeah. about to say it. Come to Dubai. With I, was, me. I was just get about over to say it. When are you going? Get over there. Uh, Soon. I'll be there like three weeks before the fight to climatize. So we'll have to plan something. Yeah, we'll do link up number two. Yeah, have to, man. We'll try it. We'll try it. We've got a lot going on in the next few months. Ooh. Imagine all of us walking to a club in suits like this. <laughs> <laughs> Just all of us, like, we're here now. <laughs> guess is what guess, Liz. Get out of the way. <laughs> if we can like, we get rid of that. Yeah. 100%. 100%. <laughs> but listen, man, honestly, it was a pleasure having you on. Appreciate you coming all the way down as well. Yeah, thank you, brother. You've travelled today as well, bro. So I really do appreciate you having you on. I definitely put a part two on the cards. Definitely, man. <laughs> Looking forward to the fight. Mate, if we can make it out there, we'll come and watch you 100%. Thank you, boys. Pleasure you regardless, you on. man. Supporting you regardless. And uh, yeah, listen, guys, if you've enjoyed the pod, I'm sure you have. That was one of my favorite ones today. Same. Hit the subscribe button. Hit that like button. Leave a comment in the comment section. And we'll see you in the next, people. Peace. Peace. Peace.